What's up everyone? Today we're going to go over LeetCode 1382 Balanced Binary Search Tree. So this is going to be the outline. First we'll go over what the question is asking, then we'll look at the intuition, next we'll look at the code, and then we'll go over the complexities. So the input is a unbalanced binary search tree, and the output needs to be a balanced binary search tree. So what do I mean by balanced? Let's take a look. So you see how in the input, we have every single node and its subtree has a corresponding depth. So to make a balanced binary search tree for the purposes of this question, we have to make sure that the depths of a node's left subtree and right subtree differ by no more than one. So the depths are a difference of one or zero. Now let's look, let's look at the input. So for the node 1, on the left-hand side, the depth of its subtree is 0 because it's null. But the depth of its right subtree is 3, 1, 2, and 3. Similarly for 2, it has a left null, but its right has a depth of 2. Similarly for 3, it has a left null, but a right depth of 1. Now this case is valid because the left and right subtrees have a difference uh, in depth of 1. But because of 2 and because of 1, this is going to be a unbalanced binary search tree. Our job is to take this and give an output where we have the nodes as balanced. So for 2, the left subtree has a depth of 1 and the right subtree has a depth of 2, so a difference of 1. For 3, the left subtree has a depth of 0 and the right subtree has a uh, has a depth of 1. Okay. Before I talk about the intuition, let's go over how we're going to approach it. So if I have an input, am I supposed to take the input and try to modify the binary search tree in place to make it a balanced binary search tree? Or am I supposed to visit the nodes, take the values, and then try to construct a balanced binary search tree? Well, my approach is the latter. So what I'm gonna do is collect all of this because it's a binary search tree and in order traversal, will give us the numbers in increasing order. And we'll put that in a list of numbers. And then we'll see how to form the logic behind the solution. So I just told you that I'll be doing an in-order traversal of the binary search tree input to collect the node's values and put them in a list. So that's what this represents. So an intuition behind this problem, a good analogy for it, is to think of it like picking up scales. So if you guys have ever seen a scale where you hold it in the middle and the left and right side balance themselves out, that's going to be the actual logic behind this problem, the solution rather. So if we're given a null input, then the output is going to be null. If we're given one node as the input, then the output is going to be the one node. Now, what about when there's two? Okay, things are not so basic anymore. I could pick it up with one, or I could pick it up with two because there's no real middle to pick it up with. So let's pick it up with one. When you pick it up with one, two balance itself by just going to the right. Now, when we're given three, this is pretty simple. This is just like this. We pick it up by the middle and the left and the right balance themselves out. So far, the left and right subtrees are all balanced. So the difference between this and this is one. The difference in between this subtree and this subtree is zero. So they're balanced. What about this example? Well, a little trickier since there's no exact middle. So what can we do? There's no middle we can pick it up, but we can still pick up one node and let the left and right parts of it recursively balance themselves out. So. If I pick 2 as the middle, what's my left side going to look like? Well, the 1 is still going to be 1, but the 3 now transforms into an input as if we were given a 2. So this 3 comma 4, think of it like this 1 comma 2. So this one is going to sort itself out and we are going to get Is this valid? Well, let's check. 
This one has a left of zero, this right of one. So this is balanced. This is balanced. What about this? It's a depth of one and a depth of two. So this is a valid balanced binary search tree. Now, what about a bigger example? We have three. This is simple. We pick it up by the middle and then we let the left part and the right part of the list sort themselves out. So this is going to behave like this and this is going to behave like that. So this is also balanced and it's a valid output. Now I know that there are multiple outputs, but it still meets the requirements of the problem where we have the subtrees difference uh, being their depth being no more than one. So now let's look at the diagram of how we actually build this recursively. All right, guys, now let's look at how the recursive stack is picking the middle of the list to return at the node. If you recall problems like recursive binary search, or quick sort, you know there's a technique where we have a left pointer and right pointer which point to the ends of the list. So in our case, 0, 1, 2, and 3 is going to be the indexes, and our recursive stack function is going to take a recursive function is going to take the left and right pointers. And in our case it's just 0, 3. There's four elements. So in the beginning, the midpoint is going to be L plus R by 2. So M is equal to 1 and 2 is the node that this recursive stack is saying yes this is my root node let me figure out recursively the left subtree and the right subtree so build 0 comma 3 is going to ask build 0 comma m minus 1 the m is calculated over here so m is 1 so 1 is substituted uh, 1 minus 1 is 0 so why are we doing m minus 1 that's because we already picked up the node which is corresponding to an index of m so rec recursively, this is going to boil down to 0, 0. And when we look at the 0th index, it's going to be node 1. So this returns itself as the left subtree to 2. So the first step is going to be this one. The second step is going to be this. Now, when this original build 0, 3 is recursively asking for its right subtree, it's going to ask m plus 1, comma 3 m plus 1 is going to say, hold on, let me talk to my subtrees and then I'll respond back to you. 1 also did that, but they were null, so I just ignored them. Now, this node is going to say, okay, I'm given 2, comma, this stack is going to say, I'm given 2, comma 3. What is my midpoint? The midpoint is 2 plus 3 by 2, which is 2. So it's going to take the node with the index of 2, and that's node 3. This is also going to ask its left and right recursive stack. The left recursive stack, m, is going to be 2, so 2 comma m minus 1 boils down to left side of 2 and right side of 1. That's out of bounds, so we return. And now we'll look at m plus 1 comma 3. So this boils down to 3 comma 3, and we pick up the node that's at index 3, and that's 4. So before 3 responds to 2, 3 is going to attach 4 on its right subtree, and then 3 is going to attach itself to 2's right subtree. So this is the overall pictures coming in. 2 is going to take 1, but 2 is going to take the 3 and the 4 combined together. Now let's look at how the code runs. So we're given a node and we have to return a balanced binary search tree. So the in order helper method simply populates this global list. And then we pass the two indexes 0 and the list of size the size of the list minus 1 as the l and r indexes for our build method so if l is ever greater than r then we're out of bounds if l is equal to r that's good we've narrowed it down to one node and we're going to return the node with a value whose index is l then m gets calculated as l plus r by 2 so we instantiate a new root node left and right by taking our pointers so l l goes here r r goes here and we avoid the one that we just picked as m after we get our left and right subtrees we attach it to our root and then we respond with the root which is fully balanced now let's look at the space and time complexities the space complexity is big o of n because we have to store 
all the integers of the input tree. The time complexity is also going to be big O of n because we have to visit every single node in our input tree. That's pretty much it as far as the space and time complexity is concerned. So that's how you solve leak code 1382. If you liked the video, please thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe.